So it really is my pleasure to be with all of you here tonight and to have served as a co-chair for this really spectacular event. But it is important for us to remember that this is only one evening, just one single evening, where we gather to celebrate the importance of introducing the idea and the concept of being open and compassionate in our conversations between caregivers and patients. At times when emotion runs high and needs are great. This is a special evening and MITS is really, truly a special organization. At South Coast Hospitals, we have long appreciated the role of patient safety and quality in the delivery of the best care. In fact, we have an app for that and you can go to iTunes and download it for free, <laughs> truly. <clears throat> but when it comes to patient safety and quality, many hospitals and clinicians lose focus on really you know, the obvious. We focus on the things that we could really see and touch. We use empirical data, we use evidence to guide our decision making. Many of us have made tremendous progress in improving patient care, reducing patient harm, reducing falls, improving outcome for skin, reducing ventilator-associated pneumonias. These are all really great things. These are all necessary things for us to do now in 2011 and as we move into the future. But we still have more to do, and that's only part of the story. Compassion and being emotionally sensitive is equally important to the patient quality and safety equation. And it's, those are two concepts that it's hard to metricize. And believe me, my staff who are here with me tonight would tell you, if I could stick a metric on something and have them drive toward it, we do. When something goes wrong, all of us know that we really want to fix it. We certainly want to fix it. We know how to fix things in the, in the process of delivering clinical care. But we don't always want to talk about them. I can tell you from experience as a clinician, we haven't always wanted to talk about the things that, that happen to patients. What MITS has shown us over the past 10 years is that we must talk about those things together. Talking about them benefits everyone, our patients, our clinicians, and our profession. I believe from where I sit, MITS work is far from complete. We are only just now beginning to understand how, how best to, to help clinicians and patients communicate together to jointly address traumatic and unfortunate events. We have much work to do, and I know everyone in this room is committed to doing that work. I encourage all of you to continue to push forward in your own organizations to ensure that our doctors, our nurses, and all of our caregivers have the support that they need to work through difficult situations so that we might arrive at a place where healing and understanding can begin. Linda tells or has told all of us actually that there's another reason that tonight is special. This year is the most successful year that MITS has ever had with more sponsors than at any other time over the past 10 years. That did not happen because of the efforts of any one person. It happened because of all of you who are here tonight. Thank you to all of my hospital and healthcare industry colleagues for stepping up and supporting MITS this year. When we called you, you answered. <clears throat> we know that the work that MITS does is important to all of us, most important to our patients and our staff in, in the hospitals, and we all, will, we, all, we all need to continue to, to take an active role. As I look around this room, and as we think about the, the HOPE Award, which was just conferred, I see hope in this room. And I think that as, as we think about healthcare delivery today and tomorrow, Hope will be the cornerstone of the work that we need to do. So I thank you for your, your time and patience this evening. It is now my, my pleasure to introduce my co-chair, Helen Haskell, who is president of Mothers Against Medical Errors and director of the Empowered Patient Coalition. Thank you for your time. <clears throat> 